<laughs> I will open the study session of the City Council to offer time to further review the proposed 2021 budget. This study session provides the Council with an opportunity for discussion outside of the regular Council meeting and an opportunity to dig a bit deeper on a specific topic. I should also note that uh, Mayor Corbett is not with us this evening and Deputy Mayor uh, Bacon is calling in. And so I will be uh, guiding the study session and our regular meeting this evening. I believe uh, Councilor Tilton Byrne is also calling in this evening. With that, I will turn it over to City Manager Paul Prezino to introduce uh, our topic. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Members, tonight Jake will give a quick overview of the 2021 budget as presented here a week or so ago, as well as the capital improvement plan and the fees for 2021. August 11th is an additional budget session that could be held on any topics the Council should desire to discuss further after tonight's meeting. Tonight, Jake will focus primarily on the 2021 budget, uh, I'm sorry, the 2021 capital improvement projects, as well as the fees. The capital improvement plan, for those people watching at home, is a 10-year fluid plan that considers future expenditures with projected revenues. For the foreseeable future, our finances only allow for a maintenance plan with little room for any new projects. This year, ha staff had to revamp the entire document and add additional identified facility maintenance costs of one to $3 million per year for the next 10 years. And that's based on that facility maintenance plan that was presented here just a few months ago. Staff had to cut millions to make this plan work. Creative financing efficiencies, prolonging large purchases is all part of the plan. However, in future years, you'll see here on the document before you uh, we are short, uh, running into 2026-27. Um, we hope to augment this shortage with either grants or City Council financial priority, priority funding uh, funds in the future, but that discussion will happen as we get closer to that date. The plan contains a list of large organizational needs that are eliminated, uh, but are noted for future, fun should future funds ever become available and that's noted uh, on the side of this capital improvement plan. The lessons learned throughout this process to ensure that we're properly planning for the maintenance of the public's investment and understanding ongoing costs of any project to assure a sustainable future. Not until 2028 can the city afford new projects. In 2028, prior commitments that consume one seventh of our revenue or roughly 15% of the total revenue will allow us the capacity to fund many of the organizational needs that have been put off for some time. And also note uh, that that at that point in time, the debt also uh, is reduced. We have a policy internally that, that requires us to stay within 30% or below of our debt, uh, and that's compared to our revenue. So you'll see once again there in 2028, uh, that's when that drops off. So if you look at the screen before you, uh, this is just a cross segment of three main areas that I'd like to talk real quickly about, and Jake will talk mainly about 2021. First of all is our outside agencies. Uh, 2021, but more importantly 2022, uh, the following year, is when we start our PAC payments, roughly $900,000, and our payments to the hospital of $100,000. That's roughly $1 million uh, to outside agencies. And I want to make perfectly clear that by making that statement, um, I do value the PAC and, and that improvement. but the council and the public should understand that that has bound us uh, for the foreseeable future to, to add additional large projects to our budget. Um, the debt service, you'll note, is roughly two to a million and a half for the foreseeable future until 2028 when that um, outside agency payment drops off. If you look down there at the very bottom, our re main revenue sources come from sales tax and other areas, but that debt to revenue ratio at about 27 to 28% doesn't drop until 2028. Once again, hamstringing us. More importantly, I think it's, it's uh, imperative that we recognize once again that we added one to $3 million every year of maintenance to this budget. Um, but our department heads went forth and cut about that throughout this entire um, um, budget to make things work. And it's imperative that we do take care of uh, those items that we have before us or that we currently have today. At the end of the day, the CIP plan takes care of what we have. Much like the rest of the budget, it's a bare bones budget. It's a maintenance budget for the next eight years. The great part of having limiting funds, limited funds, it allows us to properly plan. 
Um, prior to 28, 2028, Council will need to have critical discussions about community investments. One discussion that will need to occur sooner is how to finance the renovations or development of a new police station. And that'll be coming before Council here within the next year or two. I encourage Council to continue to advance our community, but always look to the future as a sustainable one by asking necessary questions. And with that, I turn it over to Jake to start the dialogue on the 2021 Capital Improvement Plan. Thank you. Good evening, uh, members of Council. Just start with a little bit of background of where we are. So on the July 14th workshop, we did a budget overview. We went through the operating budgets as well as did an initial look at the outside agencies. Uh, here we are on the 28th. We're going to go through the 10-year capital improvement plan as well as updates to our consolidated fee schedule. Uh, we have the August 11th workshop as an optional available for council-driven discussion and uh, see where that may take us after today's discussion. The formal adoption process for the 2021 budget will be a first reading anticipated on... Callers on the phone, if you could please mute yourself so we avoid getting feedback. Uh, August 25th is the first reading of the budget ordinance. Uh, the September 8th was anticipated to be the second reading of the budget ordinance, adoption of the consolidated fee schedule, as well as adoption of the 10-year capital improvement plan that does build in the September 22nd City Council meeting as a contingency date. That would be available if we need to do a third reading, given there were any changes in the budget process as we were to move forward. Here's a high-level overview of our agenda for tonight's workshop. Uh, we'll recap a little bit from the operating side of things as well as the other funds. But then, as you'll notice, we'll really do the deeper dive tonight into the capital improvement plan and then finish up with the consolidated fee schedule, hopefully leaving time for questions on the presentation materials from tonight as well as anything that council may desire to discuss from our previous workshop. So these are just some of our highlights that we covered um, from the 2021 budget as a whole. Um, as a reminder, this is a balanced budget, both in the general fund and the CIP. City staff is projecting negative sales tax growth for 2021. As a result of that, we did reduce about $300,000 of the general fund, um, resulting in a lean and streamlined bare bones budget, as city manager Brazino has mentioned. Um, staff went through this and made strategic cuts to limit long-term impact. To do that, we avoided long-term uh, facilities and infrastructure cuts. Um, again, there was slight increases even in the information technology budget as we try to shore up our cybersecurity and protect our most valuable asset. A uh, big change in this budget year again was moving the liquor fund from the general fund into the uh, liquor fund, the liquor pass-through into the liquor fund. Um, again, this is an intuitive budget. One of the ways uh, staff has worked to improve that is by taking the non-departmental expenditures down and moving those into the departments where the expenditures lie. Overall, this is a sustainable budget as it is balanced both in the general fund and the CIP. This is a slide from last time just showing the budget at a glance. Um, City Council may notice that the 2021 budget has increased by about 40000 from last meeting. That was just as a result of finalizing the capital improvement plan that we'll be discussing here tonight. Overall, the total budget is about $1.2 million less from 2020, still at a 2% decrease. So even with that $40,000 increase, that is you know, on a $54 million, bud $54 million budget generally immaterial. As a reminder, general fund is your primary operating fund. That includes your police, fire, public works, uh, community development, engineering, so on and so forth. The special revenue fund increase is attributed to the special assessment project and as well as storm drainage projects. And the enterprise fund decrease, once again, is attributed to some uh, major capital projects happening this year in the uh, airport as well as this new cell construction at the landfill. With that, we'll move on to the new material for tonight, which will be our capital improvement plan. Um, starting with some of the highlights of this, you'll notice as City Manager Brazino mentioned, starting in 2022 until about 2027, we take on nearly another million dollars per year in the PAC payments that we are obligated to. Um, as City Manager Brazino said, that is a, a, an investment into the community, but it does decrease our available funds for other capital improvements throughout the community. Again, this is a maintenance and replacement budget. Um, what that means is this budget takes care of existing assets and infrastructure. We're not looking to add any new pieces of equipment or materials at this time, just really focusing on taking care of what we already have. To make this uh, budget a reality, um, over the next 10 years, staff did cut about $6.5 million, which is nearly the equivalent of one full year of uh, capital expenditures to present to you the budget that we have tonight. 
Another project that we're looking at um, taking on a more innovative and creative fashion to further aid those cuts is an LED lighting conversion and doing that through a guaranteed energy savings contract. By doing it in that manner, that again takes about another $1.2 million out of outfront capital expenditures that we would have to fund through this plan. And that again all leads into the bigger picture of making sure that we're passing sustainable long-term balanced budgets. This budget, similar to the general fund, is intuitive in that we try to lump this into major categories. Um, there are no, just a number of revenue sources and again try to tie those directly to our expenditures. And again as putting forth a uh, balanced budget, it is sustainable for uh, the long term. This is the capital improvement budget at a glance. Um, you'll notice that the revenues are on the right and the expenditures are on the left. As you may notice initially, there is about $100,000 surplus anticipated. Um, that'll play into the long-term balancing of this budget as it was briefly alluded to in kind of our introductory or opening slide. As you'll see, about 86% of our expenditures are accounted by debt service, street airport, and parks and recreation. For the sake of this, the parks and recreation does include the library, which does have some significant capital expenditures in terms of facilities that we'll be discussing here a little bit later. The bulk of the revenue really comes from your uh, second penny sales tax, about 73%. And that number that you'll see, 6.9 million, directly mirrors the first penny sales tax that funds our general operations. So again, we get 2% sales tax. The first percent goes into our general fund for our operations. The second percent comes into our capital improvement plan to fund the majority of this plan before you tonight. The remaining portion of the revenue for 2021 is your tax increment financing and your city council priority funding is being recommended to be utilized to balance the capital improvement plan. And on the next slide, we do have more detail on the revenues and expenditures. So again, that 6.9 million of your second penny sales tax, uh, recapping that, that is just uh, the second penny from the sales tax that goes into this account. We put our tax increment financing revenue into this account because as we, um, in the past, pay for capital improvement for uh, TIF projects, what ends up happening is, is we front the cash for the TIF project out of our capital improvement plan, and then when that money comes back in through the increment, we replenish that and we're able to then take on those capital expenditures. So TIF revenue, we front that through the capital plan, it replenishes over time with the increment, and then we're able to utilize that revenue to fund capital expenses. The remaining piece then is the city council priority funding at 1.4 million to make up the balance of the, the revenue there. As far as the expenditures go, this slide just provides a, a general breakdown of uh, the expenditures at a high level. Most of these expenditures we'll get into in a little bit more detail, but we will go through a few of them here on this slide that are a little bit more straightforward and kind of uh, lumped into just a couple of um, expenses there. So the outside agency is about 100000 or is $100,000 for 2021, and that is just the first contractual payment for the PAC expansion. Again, 100,000, uh, 2021, that will go up to that $917,000 number starting in 2022 through 2027. Debt service, a um, couple of the more notable projects that we've done recently that we utilize debt financing for were the Bob Sheldon renovation that's currently underway and then the Larson Ice Arena project from last year. But we do still have some additional um, sources of debt from the past that are included in that debt service payment, including some of the tax increment financing projects we've done, as well as even this facility that we're in today from, I believe that was 2010. Swift Tell Center capital projects, um, the bulk of those really are made up by video screen and riser payments. So those are pieces of equipment that we've had and we just have a year over year payment for that. The riser payments, I believe actually goes back to the landfill that was fronted through that. And then the video screen was through a, a private loan. Um, service area paving is about 100,000 of their capital expenditure request for this year. The service area is located between the Larson Ice Arena and the Swift L Center itself. It's a high traffic area from the Larson or the Swift L to the Blue Rink for cattle shows and things of that nature. So it's important that that is in good condition to move trailers and different pieces of equipment through. Um, another significant expenditure from the Swift L Center is anticipated to be a new floor scrubber. And again, that's critical in their operations for uh, moving events in and out. I know that uh, just through some equipment failures, they've had to actually squeegee the entire floor by hand, which as you can imagine, is quite an undertaking for a, uh, a facility of that size. Getting into the more detailed expenditures, the first one I'll look at is our public safety, which is really comprised of our police and fire. So the police is, uh, police is planning to replace two or three vehicles for next year. Two of those are marked, one of those are unmarked. 
Again, those are not new vehicles. Those are vehicles that have reached the end of their useful life and will just be replacing um, existing equipment. Fire vehicles, we have an engine one replacement. This is one that we've actually started already at this point, and then that $95,000 is just a payment on that engine that we're anticipating to take ownership um, likely yet this year. Uh, the remainder there that you'll see is $70,000 for fire facility, and that's going to complete the self-training site. This is a three-year project that was originally budgeted at $45,000 per year. We did do some cutting back this year due to COVID. That $70,000 really is the balance from this year and then next year's allocation to finalize that project, which will really be a great resource for our volunteers to make sure that they are staying uh, current on their skills for uh, firefighting. Parks and Recreation. About 390000 of this is for vehicles and equipment. Um, again, the bulk of the expenditures there are for a boom truck as well as a chip truck, about $310,000 between those two vehicles. Park facility, we have the Southbrook restrooms uh, rehabilitation, which is about a $100,000 project, and then a pool heater replacement, which was part of the condition analysis at about $38,000 on that. At the ice arena, we're looking at replacing the aging and uh, past its useful life Olympia with a Zamboni for taking care of the ice in between um, games and practices. And then the, belt, the remainder of that is for a uh, rubber flooring and a rooftop unit at about another 100,000. The library um, you'll see is included in Parks and Recreation for the sake of this analysis, and that is about 765,000. Nearly 700,000 of that is for a uh, full-scale HVAC rooftop unit replacement there. And then there is some other minor expenses for cabinet heaters and then removing and repairing where the juice bar used to be um, upstairs and now has since been removed. So it's just taking out the cabinets that have been replaced and then uh, creating restoration on the wall and, and such. Golf course, um, really the bulk of that, again, about 140,000 is for regular replacement of some mowers. And then the remainder, 25,000, is for the safety netting that goes between the driving range and um, one of the playing holes. So that netting is critical in uh, protecting players from driving range golf balls to ensure the safety of players. The one per, uh, the public art 1% for next year comes out to just under 62,000, and that excludes the debt service, outside agency funding, and sicking fund. But then that does 1% does apply to all remaining capital expenditures within this account. Street and airport, um, vehicles, you'll see about 530,000 up there. Um, a big chunk of that, again, a dump truck for 200,000, a payloader for 200,000 as well. So again, that's just replacing equipment that has passed its useful life. The sidewalk curb and maintenance project next year is anticipated to take place on 3rd and 4th Street. Um, and then we have our annual chip seal project, our annual overlay project. And then the Larson Park parking lot is actually in very similar condition to the Bob Sheldon lot that's being um, renovated as part of the project this year. So again, a, pro a, park that's in, uh, a parking lot that's in pretty rough shape um, and seeing more use with the redesign of the disc golf course this year. Airport um, makes up a portion of that at about 115000 Again, we had a very large apron reconstruction project in the current year. Much smaller projects next year, looking at a mower, again, annual painting and chip sealing that we take on, and then a smaller pavement maintenance, port, pavement maintenance project that we'll have a city portion, but again, the bulk coming from intergovernmental funds. So as City Manager Brazito had stated before, to kind of get to where we are, um, and as I had mentioned too, we did pull out about six and a half million of departmental level reductions. Uh, the table up on your, uh, up there before you is what uh, accounts for that $6.5 million number. As I had briefly mentioned, another savings of about 1.2 million is looking at an LED lighting conversion through a uh, energy savings contract, which again, benefits the city by not having to provide any upfront capital and protects the funds that we have available in our capital improvement plan. A uh, decision that will not necessarily need to be made by any means tonight, but again is on the horizon is the future of our police facility. Very preliminary numbers indicate that to renovate the current facility would be about a $6 million project. New construction would be in the neighborhood of $12 million. Again, very preliminary, but that is a large expense that would be on the horizon. Uh, to combat this, staff is always monitoring and exploring opportunities, whether that be grants, one-time opportunities, whether that be through donors or different uh, funding sources such as the LED lighting conversion energy savings contract, as well as looking at alternative service and program delivery, which we engage in with our outside agencies and partners in the community. Again, this is just a snippet of the previous uh, slide that you saw looking at the bottom line, as you'll see, 
the way this program is structured at present, 21 through 24 really is operating at a surplus, but really we're carrying that over, recommending to carry that over every year to really buy down those deficits that we see in 25 through 27. Um, and a big chunk of the 25 overage that you're seeing there, we do have about $1.5 million for Swiftel HVAC replacement. So that's a, a very large project that is contributing to a little bit of that overage there. 26 and 27, just did a quick review on there. And again, it, there's just a number of different vehicles and uh, facilities. Um, there's a fire and street vehicles that con contribute to that. And then well as facility upgrades and repairs to the Swiftel, Larson Ice Arena, library and fire. So um, nothing necessarily specific, but again, it's a number of different facilities. And as city manager Brazino said, that McKinstry analysis um, illuminating the condition of our facilities did increase our budgets by that one to three million almost every year with uh, planned maintenance repairs. Uh, shifting gears a little bit, just wanna go through some of our high level changes on the consolidated fee schedule as well as provide a little bit of history on, on what this document is. So the consolidated fee schedule was created as part of the 2020 budget. Um, historically what the city had done is would pass these fee resolutions and had um, different resolutions outlining fees for whether it be fines and forfeitures, parks and recreation, and they kind of lived as disparate documents that um, you know members of the community as well as staff would have to pull together when it was time to review them. By creating the consolidated fee schedule, we put all of those fees into one convenient location. It assists staff by creating regular analysis, but also uh, members of the public, developers, so on and so forth, by being able to regularly see um, and easily find where our fees are and what they're currently set at. Part of the direction given to city staff is that we review this fee schedule quarterly. Um, as a reminder, council may remember back in January, we brought some updates regarding the PDDs as uh, planned development districts as some updates were made in that, in that regard. And then most recently at the end of May, um, we brought the electric vehicle charging station rate proposal to city council. Just behind the scenes, every time that we update these fees, we look at them comprehensively as a staff. So we never wanna do a one-off fee change. We wanna give the opportunity to bring those fees changes quarterly as needed. Um, going forward for this year and how we approach the budget process, the direction given to the department heads is a, comp a comparative analysis. So looking at our peer communities to see what they're changing, our charging, and then making sure that we're following in line with market trends, but then also focusing on cost recovery in some cases for the different services that we provide. Of course, our cost recovery at the public pool is a very different model than the cost recovery that we may have at the landfill or an enterprise fund. Some new fees that you'll see this year are located at the airport, just different ways of uh, applying fees to the operations of the airport. Engineering added a sidewalk and curb ramp inspection program. Um, you'll see it's what looks to be a new, uh, change in the police fees, but really they're just mirroring some changes that were done at the state. So we added an additional category there. Some fees were increased, increased this year. Um, building permits just hadn't been um, up in a number of years. So again, looking at our peers, we had fallen slightly behind there. So wanted to update ourselves into the market there. Parking fines generally went up about $5 across the board. Um, court costs were increased at the state level. So you'll see a lot of changes in our fines and forfeitures. But the vast majority of that, again, those uh, court costs go directly to the state. The city doesn't receive any of that revenue. Um, again, a couple other fees were uh, increased within there. On the decreasing side, we got rid of the uh, yard waste bag. So as we've gone to the CART program, we've decreased the uh, yard waste bag fee down to zero and that will be removed. And then our airport landing fees, they look like they've been decreased, but again, with some of the new additions and some operational changes, they're gonna collect some fees directly as through as our, as instead of through our fixed base operator. And with that, I would be happy to answer any questions um, on the materials tonight or if we have the desire to go back to materials from the previous workshop. Council, do you have any questions for Jake? Or our counselors on the phone, do you have questions for Jake? I have one. Council Member Brink. Yeah, did I see that correctly, Jake? There's no increases to the city council priority funding after 2022 or 2021? That is correct. Yeah, okay. at this time, um, we've got just kind of, this goes back to a workshop that was held with city council, I believe, mm -hmm. in February of this year. At that time, staff did recommend about $1.7 million of city council funding for 2021. Part of the reduction that you're seeing here is a little bit of timing, but again, going to those LED conversion and uh, different uh, app opportunities there. But yeah, after 2022, there would be no use of the city council priority funding. Okay. I would note on that, though, that 
we always replenish city council financial policy projects usually sometime in february once we've closed the books in january kind of have an idea of what mm -hmm. we should have so around that february time frame you can expect us to come back with what you should have in that balance and then recommendations what's tough this year is, is we have covid mm -hmm. and so we've put everything kind of on the side in the back burner still not knowing what's going to happen next year it might still be kind of a, an ongoing discussion but our hope is, especially for the newest council members to, to know um, that, that haven't been part of this, this City Council Financial Policy Project is fairly new. We just started this last year. And the whole intent is that council should know exactly how much money we have available, and council should set the priority of those existing additional funds that we have available. So hopefully in February we can bring that back. Okay, thank you. And um, my other question was actually more detail about that LED conversion project. Can you just explain that a little bit? more for me what's involved in in all of that where where will those be yeah absolutely so we're still working on the logistics of that to finalize it but in the sh kind of a brief overview of that is so what a company you do is you go out for a request for proposals process and you hire a consultant or a contractor there it's an ESCO energy savings uh, con contractor and what the company actually do is they guarantee your energy savings through audits so they'll come in and go through all the facilities that we're um, looking to go to LEDs, and they'll say, okay, we will guarantee that you're gonna save on your energy bill $75,000 a year, just for um, you know, a rough number. And then what happens is they'll come in and then at no cost to us, we have to, you know, they'll come through and do all the replacements, and then we utilize those energy savings to pay off that project over the life. So it usually, is a, I believe the state law is a 15 year replacement cycle, or a recovery cycle on that, so we would just use our guaranteed energy savings. And the reason they're guaranteed is that through um, multi-factor um, you know, confirmation, they'll run different audits and analysis to make sure that we're actually seeing those savings and we will verify it as well on our own. If for whatever reason um, it comes in that we only saw 70,000, the company actually writes you a check to cover the difference. So they'll always make sure that they're proving and we're finding value of 75,000 if that's the number every year. And how many of our facilities would be, do you think, viable yeah. for that like everything or pretty close um it would be the swiftell the larson the activity center the library the street shop so it it is the vast majority of them pretty much anyone of them that don't have leds currently would be included nick uh council member um how are we doing on this year's cip are we have we pushed things off and and they're listed in amongst this and then is 15th and 7th we still have uh are are we still on budget for that so i will uh break that down in two parts 15th and 7th i'll probably ask jackie to come up in a second but i know eric is on the phone so i would let him talk to the uh, current year capital plan and how we've okay. mitigated our expenses and where we stand right now let's hear from eric all right on the phone. Jake, i'll start yeah, I'll start. This is Eric. Uh, hello, everybody. So the same as with the uh, general fund budget, we uh, preempted some declines in revenue and we adjusted our budget um, around 20 to 25 percent down. And so what we are going to do um, since revenues are tracking higher than expected, we're going to get back together at the end of August and uh, reprioritize the project and see what we can still bring back this year. Um, in addition, we will evaluate as every year the uh, carry forward uh, to next year um, in case we still have available funds and the work couldn't get done this year. Thanks, Eric. Jackie? Okay. For an update on the 15th Street South project, we have projected that we have an updated engineer's estimate from our design engineer and between the drainage fund and the existing uh, cash in the assessment fund, we do have enough to cover that project. And so we're just waiting you know, to work out the final details uh, with landowners, but we do have it budgeted. Um, it, if things come through, it could be bid in 2021, you know, if we get all the details worked out, but we do have enough funds based on the current engineer's estimate. Thanks, Jay. Council members, do you have additional questions for Jake or another member of the staff? Yes, I have one more. Um, can you, can one remind me um, with the PAC payments, is that a legally binding contractual obligation that we made or? Okay. 
He's made that. I'll point. take that on. This is Eric again. And, and um, I think it was about three or four years ago, the, the city does have a, a note payable with the donor. Um, and it is a contractual obligation for um, the until 2027 right now. And, and I would also uh, mention that it does impact our debt capacity as well for the next, uh, well, eight years as well. And, and, and Eric, that's correct. That is correct. Um, it is also something that we could renegotiate um, if, if available. Yeah. Council so Member is, Collins? Is it, is it possible somehow to uh, pay that off early? The money that goes for the pack and then also goes to the hospital. Eric, you want to take that one? Well, it, it, it is. Uh, this note is a zero interest note, and so it, it financially, in terms of like saving interest, it wouldn't make sense to pay it off before any of our other debt commitments. Um, we could potentially use city council priority funding to pay some of that as well, but that that would be in place of other projects that are being considered for that as well. Good, good point, Eric, uh, that since it is zero interest, we'd be better off paying off, for instance, the debt to the city building, which is at a higher interest rate. That way we can save additional money in the future. Uh, so that is an option uh, to pay off debt as, as a premise or, or an idea rather than just the specific item. Council members Bacon or Tilton Byrne, do you have any questions for Jake? I don't. Jake, I had just one question about debt service. Uh, I noticed that after the current uh, or fiscal year 21, our debt service total decreases by over a million dollars. Um, what debt is retired? I assume that's the retirement of, of a pretty significant project. Do you recall what that is? I believe that would be the 2010, but I will defer to Eric on that as well. Eric, we are deferring to you. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I was muted. Yes, um, um, Jake is correct. It is a combination of the 2010 bond that goes away and as well as the uh, payments for the CRC building with the county, that also go, those will go away in 2022. Thanks, Eric. No problem. Any other questions for Jake or another member of the staff? Maybe not a question, but just a comment. I mean, again, this is a really lean budget, right? And I think it's just really important that that is emphasized in the community and that everyone understands that there's not gonna be Lots of funding for extra or new projects. Jake, did you have any other notes to share with, with the council? No, nope, that was it. All right. Well, I think that wraps up this evening's budget session. We will be reconvening for our regular meeting at 6 o'clock in this room.